All right, so I've got six o'clock. So, okay, we'll call to order the uh, January 8th, 2019 meeting of the Beale Early Childhood Center Building Committee. First item of the agenda this evening is to review the meeting minutes of December 11th. Comments? Motions? So moved. Motion has been made and seconded to accept the meeting minutes of December 11th, 2018. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. For those of you who follow such things, you will note that uh, Bob Cox remains on the committee. We're pleased to say to our folks, despite his retirement, uh, Kevin has worked at the MSBA and found a way for him to remain on in a deputized position or something like that. So thank you, Bob. Um, as the time, as we get closer to uh, the project moving on, we'll obviously ask Mr. Baldinger to come in and uh, he can dovetail into his current transition along with, uh, I see Angela is so excited about the project, she's already here. Uh, but Bob will uh, remain a member of the committee and therefore will continue to enjoy his uh, years of service and his experience in building buildings under this uh, engagement. So we're very thankful of your willingness to stay, Bob. Thank you. There we go. It's a good brief response. We might <laughs> well, I'll review and act on the following bill schedules and warrants. Lamoureux Pagano invoice 1717-1811 for $199,220,000. Cogswell Sprinkler invoice 50193 for $1,500. PMA Consultant invoice 4110-18, $20,064.10. Lamoureux Pagano invoice 1717-1812, $464,845, and PMA Consultants invoice 4110-19 for $22,820.94. Patrick, any, is everything in order? I would defer to our project management company who's responsible for project financials yeah. to make any comments. PM, PMA uh, did a detailed review of the architectural invoices and um, as well as the Cogwell sprinkler invoice, and they were all um, appropriate and consistent with the contracts and, and the work performed, and we recommend an approval of those. What did we use Cogswell for? We, flow tests? We had no, to do an additional flow test. Okay. Flow, flow <laughs> test, yes. And um, PMA's consultant invoices, I can, can attest, are, are consistent with our, our contract and, and level of effort to date, and uh, but independently recommended by, uh, uh, reviewed by the school department. I don't want to say I'm recommending. Our yeah, no, we can't have that. So who, who what? No, he's a good guy and all, but who watches him? <laughs> are you? Yeah. Well, yes, yeah. the entirety of the building committee has responsibility for oversight of the project management company. No, I realize that, but functionally speaking, I'm not tracking his hours nor pretending to. So who's going over his bill? So we look at we look at his bill. They come into me. It also goes into Patrick's office. I definitely look at all the invoices. And um, actually, we met earlier this week to determine how we're going to manage invoices throughout the rest okay. of the project. So, yep. And we, we track, we track <coughs> cumulative amount going according to the plan, and we're on track. Okay, thank you. Any questions on those uh, warrants, as I mentioned? If there are, do I have a motion? Motion uh, payment. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the uh, warrants as provided in the memo and verbally discussed. Any uh, further questions? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Unanimous. We will now hear a report from the special committee charged with determining certain historic elements of the current Beale building at 1 Maple Avenue. Who is chairing that special committee? Mike Pernov wasn't able to make it? I'll start. Uh, oh, oh, Mike, how are you? Come on up. <coughs> I didn't see you behind the 14 guys. <laughs> how are you? Good. So we had three members, right? Yes. Chris, are you going to speak? Sure. Or who, who wants to chair this? So about uh, a week or so ago, uh, both Bob Cox, Mike Perner, and myself took a, tier, a tour of the Beale building. Um, we looked at some of the things that could be preserved and, and taken as historical items uh, to be preserved as we're heading towards the new building. Um, I think, big picture, there, there's not a whole lot as far as historical items, but there are some things that we think will be important uh, to memorialize as we're moving forward with the project. So I don't know if Mike wants to jump in with some of the kind of historical items that we're talking about, and then I can talk about some of the educational pieces. Okay. Since, since we've talked, uh, came up with a few more clippings, one about the dedication of the school, which 
discusses a lot of the uh, <laughs> building materials used, the fact that the, the rear of the school was uh, made so they could expand outwards if they needed to. That's if the walls didn't fall down. <laughs> um, also, the uh, monument in the front of the school that was replaced a few years ago was a gift of Mr. Mrs. Beale and her brother. Okay. In addition, there's a copy of the program uh, for the dedication of the school. But uh, what we have here is the plaque when the school was dedicated. Yeah. And interest, interestingly enough, the architect's name was Beale for the Beale School. You know that. Uh, that's on the left as you go into the front entrance. I'll let you so I'll speak to some of There's a, a handful of uh, murals on the walls that were put in as it became an early childhood center uh, in the latest version of what Beale is now, um, mostly to bring some color to the, uh, to the building and make it a little bit more child friendly. They're large murals. There's no intention of physically taking these murals with us, but in working with the architect, uh, trying to find a way to preserve some of these pictures in a way that's nice for a new building, uh, mainly for the younger grades, primarily kindergarten, uh, just to bring some of the feel of Beale with us as we're moving forward to a, new, to a new building. So these are some images of those paintings that have been done over the course of the years. There's two paintings in particular that, um, that are especially, if you can stop there, Bob, that's the Peter Reynolds piece. It was done in uh, 2000. 2005, I believe, 2006. Peter Reynolds is a pretty prominent child's author and illustrator these days. Uh, he's done books such as The Dot-ish. Uh, he's from Framingham, I believe, originally. Uh, but it's something that is very near and dear to the school. We use the Make Your Mark as a theme pretty th uh, consistently throughout the year. Uh, so that's a piece that we're looking to preserve now. Um, the architects are talking about some digital imaging now these are up on uh, plaster walls, so it's not like we can carve them out and, and remove them, but we're trying to find a way to, again, preserve some of the work that's been done so that it can uh, move along with some of the memories of Beale and, and what that's meant for at least this later cha latest chapter of what the school's been used for. Okay, this is the, I call it a bass relief sculpture. I'm not quite sure if that's the right term. Uh, you enter the school on the right. It does have a little bit of damage. You can see the white uh, line there, but I'm told that the people involved have said they could restore that. And it was dedicated, I think, from the class of 1926. It's a little bit hard to read there. Right, it's 1926. Yeah. Okay. We weren't sure if that was the first graduating class, given you know if it started as a 9 through 12, or if it built up to that, or whatever it might be. Now, Mike, is this one of these things that if you repair it, you're actually greatly reducing its value or legitimacy? I'm not sure if there's a lot of value to it other than to the town. Okay. And who said they could fix it? There was some, I was talking with um, some folks who were touring the building with us, and we were talking about this piece, and they said that it's a fairly straightforward process of... Um, of doing some repairs to some chipped edges. Who were they? The architects? Did yeah, uh, oh. I believe it was when I was talking with Sean. Okay. He had mentioned that is a fairly common process. Be nice to know what that would cost. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, this is the up over the uh, front entrance, and something that none of us noticed while we were touring is that the first O in school is much smaller. Mm -hmm. I call it the spaghetti O. <laughs> and we tried to figure out why that was. I did some searching online. I couldn't figure it out. Luckily, somebody that works for me uh, is a history buff and very familiar with uh, old cemeteries and gravestones and so on. He said this was a common practice when they used to engrave the stones that if they didn't measure correctly, they didn't have enough room for the, the whole word, they would make one letter a lot smaller. So that solved that mystery. But it's interesting that none of us noticed it until just now. 
Whether or not that can be uh, preserved easily or cost effectively, I'm not sure. Uh, I do have the uh, material it's made out of. I believe it said limestone of some sort. I have it in the article here. It's pretty uh, descriptive of all the materials used in the school. Well, we'll have to figure out along the way, depending on the ultimate use and, and uh, status of the building, if it were to come down, mm -hmm. I would argue we would want to understand what it would cost to capture that and possibly relocate it as a main entrance uh, <coughs> sign or some signage uh, use along the way. But we'll have to see ultimately where the building goes. The other, the other thing I can add, and this came along afterwards, I think, uh, after we toward the school, was the fact that Major <coughs> Beal actually lived on Lake Street, which I at first thought it was an old house that stood right about on the side of the Gladden Center that I remember as a kid, with the big stone foundations. I thought maybe that's where he lived. But I checked with some of my friends that are very good at researching deeds and so on. And it turns out that is not where he lived. He lived further, about a half to three quarters of a mile down Lake Street towards uh, <coughs> Route 20, the corner of, not sure of the name, not uh, Grove, not Grove, the other, a newer street. Oh, okay. And then the house burned. But it, it's still very interesting the, the fact that yeah. Major Beale lived on Lake Street, the new school was being built on Lake Street, and being named out at Coastal Circle. <coughs> Anything else on this? All right, sir. Uh, just one final piece is that there's been some conversation around the greenhouse piece and the dedication to Bart Falvey, uh, a student at Beale who did pass while he was a first grader there. And uh, there was a dedication of the greenhouse, which has been symbolic of our outdoor study with um, science and uh, gardening and butterflies in the, in the lot. And there's some discussion as to how we might be able to preserve Bart Falvey's name in the way that we're doing the outdoor study at the new building. So those are conversations that are ongoing. Good. One other thing, I did come across uh, some clippings that I had that I hadn't found until just recently. Uh, one is a, uh, an account of Major Beale's audience with Queen Mary when he was uh, serving the English forces before he came into the American forces in World War I. In between, they think he had a nervous breakdown, <clears throat> but he recovered enough to go back into the Army, the United States Army. Uh, the second is the presentation of a portrait of him uh, by family members to the town. But what happened to the portrait, we don't know. Does Joe, is that the picture of that portrait, Joe? I don't know, that was you had... I found online that was from, it was from an account from uh, his prep school from Andover uh, that had a the picture of the, the portrait mm. uh, and okay. the, uh, the slides that we presented to the school. All right. Right. If anybody would like copies of any of these, just <coughs> let me know. Uh, just email me at mperno1. Well, oh, actually, Mike, if you could just make up a package and get it to Val, Val will disperse it out. Oh, that's a good idea. That would be better, because I'm sure we would all like to have the time to read it. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. Chair, can I ask one Of course. Question? I think that I saw, maybe it was in the recent article you wrote, Mr. Perna, about uh, <coughs> that the gymnasium had originally been dedicated to a different World War One. Mr. Nee. Private right. Nee. Okay. Michael Nee. Uh, Major Beale was the highest ranking uh, service member from town to die. Private Michael Nee was an Irish immigrant family. I'm not sure if he was an immigrant. Uh, but he was the youngest and least uh, <coughs> ranking member. Oh. Huh. All the others, there was one that was killed by friendly fire. I think uh, one may have died as a prisoner of war. Uh, the rest died from disease. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, some in the States, some overseas. Uh, I just came across an account, and it's kind of tied in with this, that one of the people that died was returned. His body was returned from overseas through the cemetery. He was a, actually a lawyer, even though he was a private. Uh, and when he was being buried, we came across someone that I call the Indiana Jones of Shrewsbury. He was an aviator. He was trained as an aviation cadet in World War I, went on to fly during the 
in between war years. His name was Eustis Wells. And as the uh, funeral service was taking place at the cemetery, he flew over the cemetery and dropped flowers out of his aircraft. Mm -hmm. So the interesting thing is, where did he take off from? Worcester Airport didn't exist at that point. Did Westboro, I'm not sure, maybe Grafton, but somewhere along the line, he got a plane, he flew over the cemetery, dropped the flowers out. He went on to uh, form his own airline in South America, Peru, like a, a freight carrying business. Uh, um, at one point, <coughs> one of his aircraft ran out of fuel over the Peruvian desert, so they kind of crash landed. When they didn't arrive, he flew out to find them, landed beside them, brought them some food and water, picked up a couple of people, went off to civilization, to people that would know how to get back there, then flew back out with some fuel, to refuel the plane. And <coughs> That's quite a story. Yeah, it is. It is. Joe, did you have anything else? No. <laughs> My thinking on that was uh, if we could, along the way, consider naming the like space at the new building, uh, so that we're basically transferring elements of the current deal to the new deal. Mm -hmm. But we've got plenty of time to give that some consideration. Anything else on this matter? No? Right. Thank you very much, Mike. Item five, to hear reports, review, and act on the following matters. Report from the owner's project manager. Okay, well, we have the project schedule at the last building committee meeting we distributed the Detailed project schedule we remain on schedule, and in one of the, uh, the critical phase of design that we are in right now is design development, and I'll leave it to uh, Katie Crockett to idea. talk about what they're doing in that phase. And it all leads up to a Close. Yeah. leads up to a submittal to the MSBA in February. So we're, we're progressing right along with the, each step, and. Uh, so we, the project remains on schedule, and our, our deadlines for deliverables uh, to the MSBA are on track. Uh, with respect to project financials, I have passed out just a <coughs> typical budget summary spreadsheet. Uh, these are updated to show, um, to, to include all invoices that were addressed tonight. So um, we have, uh, this project has uh, the, the red uh, number about two-thirds of the way down. We have $1,783,183,180 uh, spent thus far. Um, that's out of, for this phase, that's out of the, uh, comes from the contract values of $9.8 Of course, the total project budget is, um, is uh, $92,809,000, but that's, will come when we get uh, the job going under construction. Why did we need that second flow test up at Glover? <coughs> We're confirming utilities to double check that we have the appropriate fire protection system in place. In your plans for the new building? Correct. Okay. Correct. Sorry, Paul, go ahead. No, that, that's fine. So that, that takes care of um, the financials and um, if we, with respect to process, uh, we are supporting the, the town with the uh, review of the owner construction manager contract, and um, that was issued with the request for proposal to the to the contractors. It, it was a generic document because at the time you don't know who is going to be. It's been filled out, and and we have a conference call tomorrow to review the document again for the minor adjustments to make it uh, suitable. Uh, the, the town's town manager and the town council will be reviewing it, you know, and we have a telephone conference with the MS, MSBA, so we'll, but we, those are minor adjustments, so we expect to be able to have the CM uh, under contract soon. And uh, They showed up tonight, so they must feel <laughs> relatively comfortable yeah. about it. And since we, since we last met, we had, uh, uh, we met four weeks ago, but three weeks ago, uh, the construction manager, the architect, and the OPM met at the architect's offices and we had uh, a pre-construction kickoff meeting to just discuss planning and you know, the um, uh, already, and, and we'll allow the, the construction manager to discuss this in a little further detail, uh, but we, we uh, discussed the next phases because um, the architect is, is, is charged, the, uh, the construction manager as part of pre-construction services is charged to do several construction cost estimates and they're already 
uh, preparing their for their first estimate <coughs> and um, giving going working together with the OPM, the town, and, and the architect, considering what types of work out in the field what might be done a little earlier to help uh, provide greater assurance that, that that the building will open on schedule. So those are called early packages and early work that we anticipate sometime next summer. So we're in the early phases of planning for all that. And that's about all I have to report because I want to leave, leave the, the architect and, and CM something to, to speak to. But if there are any questions upon what I've discussed, I'd be happy to. Well, just on the question of Lake Street, Kevin and I were talking about it earlier this week. Um, given that the Board of Selectmen of the Road Commission is I, uh, obviously whatever we recommend, if it's anything out of the ordinary, we would want to bring to them for a formal vote, mm -hmm. particularly if it's an extreme option. Um, but I think it's critically important that this group understand the three options, what it means to the budget, and then make a recommendation <coughs> to the board. So as you, as that's thinking through your head, even if we need to have a quick special meeting, I, uh, I think it would be worthwhile doing it because I don't want to ask the board to operate in a vacuum. Uh, and at the same point, I don't want to just run off and pretend we should be shutting roads without the, the, the same process that we make other people follow. So we should think in ahead here. I think our next meeting is February 12th. I don't know when you'll be ready to go, obviously. But just mm -hmm. keep that in mind uh, as you're thinking about these things and keep Kevin in the loop um, so that we can line up those, those meetings. Very good. Anything All right. Item 5B, report from the architect. Okay, so we are full bore into design development, which has been described to multiple times. Um, a lot of our work it has been involved with meeting with more representatives from the town, the engineering department, planning department, public safety, uh, certainly the school department. We've also met with all of our consultants, so that is site, landscape architect, structural, uh, let's see if I can remember them all, fire protection, <laughs> uh, mechanical, plumbing, and electrical, not to, and, then, and then there are some others. So it's, it's, a very bi it's a big effort in terms of getting everybody, we're taking that schematic design well, and we're elevating it, hopefully, at an even level to, to that next point for design development. Additionally, we've, as uh, Paul mentioned, we've met with the construction manager, and we've been talking about the overall project schedule. And um, what has been proposed and we're, we're, we're working towards is uh, having the site documents complete, 100% complete at the end of our 60% construction document phase, which would be early May. So this is one of the advantages of a construction management um, delivery method where we're able to, to stage the, the, um, the different sets. And I, I, I'll let Fontaine speak more about that, but a lot of this is in terms of advantage of doing site work during the best site work weather so that we're prepared to move forward with the building in an expeditious way. The whole target for the fall 2021 occupancy looks very solid at the moment um, from our discussions. There's a second um, early bid package that's on the table which is 100% uh, concrete and steel to be complete in early August when we're done with 90% uh, construction documents. This, is a, this allows for ordering of steel, getting the foundations in again during the weather, the, the better weather for that, and it will help with, uh, with um, the schedule, which is a, a great advantage in terms of, of saving money over time. Basically, the more quickly we can build this, the better as a general rule. Um, we've done this with Fontaine on other projects successfully. Um, we're comfortable with this approach. One of the things with the early site package that it is predicated on is site plan approval, the uh, Board of Selectmen approval of the Lake Street realignment. Um, all of those issues need to come forward. And we're targeting February 7th to have a, a or, excuse me, 
mid-February to have a submittal to site plan, the site plan committee, the planning board, so that they have adequate time to review it for their uh, approval process uh, the next month. So this is, again, very compressed. For that site plan approval, we uh, understand they'll want to, it's, it will be reviewing the zoning bylaws as it applies to our particular project, including all of the parking, the site circulation, where the snow removal is, many of the questions that came forward in the public hearings that we had earlier in the project. So we're uh, steadily addressing those issues. One of the things that came up when we met with public safety on the site was um, they wanted to have the entire ring road around the back wide enough for their fire trucks, not including the sidewalk. So we've widened that a little bit on our plan to do so. It's another five feet. And we've extended that <clears throat> all the way to the main entrance, which will uh, assist with parent pickup queuing as well. So <coughs> Excuse number me. Sorry, of advantages with that. That's an example of yeah. some of the things that we're massaging through through the program. How long is that whole roadway though? It's long enough for uh, 120 cars. It, it, is, it is an additional... Uh, That's a significant additional cost. ...payment. And it's about public safety. No, I understand all that. I'm not against it. But I'm just talking about, you know, five feet here, yeah. five feet here. Before you know it, it starts really uh, adding up. That's a point. And that, that's kind of what we see during what? this phase. 12-foot wide road. Uh, it's actually going to be eight feet for the... Um, Parallel parking that we have for the assembly area plus 20 feet, so it's 28. It's it's a two-way road, it's a road. Okay, during the day. Yeah, exactly. so it will be quite wide, probably a little bit wider than what we have at, on Crescent Street that we added for that um, the access, access to yeah. Sherwood, if you can visualize. I just want to make sure that that's all fine and good and so forth, but as these things are tallying up, yes. I don't want the building committee being caught off that all of a sudden... Um, we're out there because a bunch of people had a bunch of nice, legitimate ideas. <clears throat> because um, that's fine, but just please be aware of that. I don't want to wake up one day and see that another five meetings happen and somehow we've chewed through a half a million bucks. That's a good point, of course. And I bring <coughs> that up just to give you an example of one of myriad yeah. details that we're addressing. And there is an ebb and flow in yep. this space. There's additions of work there efficiencies that we're finding. Our biggest focus really on the site, and we've been working hand in hand with Fontaine on this, is to reduce, remember the soil costs we yep. talk about with the, with the uh, naturally occurring arsenic. We're trying to reduce the burden in that regard. That's something that we all see as a big ticket item that we can address in this phase. Um, so that's been our focus. The other elements are more what I would characterize as refining the project. Um, and we've been getting some great input from the town um, in terms of a whole variety of things relative to the building and the site, the systems. Um, so so that's, that's where we are at the moment. Um, what we wanted to be sure was clear to you is MSBA has a different approach to uh, their submissions from here on in. They actually ask us to submit the drawings and the binder, everything except the cost estimate, three weeks early. This allows them, the commissioning agent, uh, other people, time to review the documents um, in a timely manner. They, I, I believe they ended up finding they had a backlog of work at one point, um, Paul, and that was one of the reasons that they did this. So we are submitting design development to MSBA on February 20th. And our drawings are going to Fontaine and our estimators as of February 11th. And then we have the three-week estimate period in there. So what we will do at our, um, and, and we are, our reconciliation, so our meeting to determine, have a meeting of the minds on the budget is scheduled for March 8th. 
So our March 12th meeting will be the meeting where you have the opportunity to vote approval of design development. I think one of the advantages of this is we will have all these materials <coughs> uploaded for your review a couple of weeks ahead of time. Um, but we do have to submit it and then the um, to MSBA, and then the estimate is an, ad an addendum to that submission. That's how it's structured right now. So, uh, and the building committee, of course, is um, required to vote approval of each of those submittals. So that's what we're proposing to do. I just wanted to be clear with you about that. Are there any questions on that process? And we'll continue to do that through the various phases that we have. We're not tied to MSBA board meetings any longer, so we're able to set our schedule. And we do have a school committee meeting <clears throat> scheduled for March 13th as well, so that will be an update meeting at that time. Um, and unless there are any, <coughs> any other questions, that's, that is our update. Great. Uh, I just want to go back to the mission creep or however one wants to describe that. Who at meetings is taking the notes of, uh, if you will, further ideas and then chasing down to at least track a likely per unit cost? Um, we, what we do is keep minutes of these meetings. Um, that particular um, outcome came from the meeting, as I said, with engineering as well as public safety. Yep. Uh -huh. And so we track those by meeting minutes. We don't track them, you know, by dollar uh, specifically. <clears throat> it, and how do you know what could be coming around the corner if someone isn't at least doing a quick calculation of X number of <laughs> cubic yards or something, square feet, so that you keep a run? I, I'm not going to get into asking questions. I'm just going to ask directly. I would like you to keep a running tally of those things because you may find a situation where, and, and they may be all legitimate, okay, no one's causing that, calling that into question. But frankly, within 48 hours, we can all get together. And I would rather have this board kept up on, you know, we are or we aren't having great success with the arsenic issue, and therefore this is what's where mm -hmm. we're facing now. I don't want to go month to month on that stuff and find out we have a challenge staring at us. Okay. Okay. Very good. We'll do that as a team. Yes, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. And the, always the objective is to keep the scope <coughs> as is and, put, and just advance the design of the current scope. Now, that, 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 you know, that is an identification of an additional scope with a wider road that was envisioned. But in, in general terms, the, the process and the, in the, in the um, approach is to keep the scope as is yeah. and, and just advance the design. And the benefit of these estimates at design development, 60% CD, and um, and 90% CD is that if any, at any point the, the construction cost estimate exceeds the budget, then uh, design adjustments are made. But what I hear you saying is even a, a better system is in, in the interim, if, if we're keeping the spreadsheet, and any things that has the potential to cause that problem is identified very early on. Because that alone will be an interesting uh, cost. That's not going to be, mm -hmm. uh, I would say, insignificant. Mm -hmm. And it sounds legitimate, and God knows what the number of people will be there and the need to get through without fine. But I think we should have a separate sheet because someday we will be asked, we may ask you, since day one, where have we seen mission change slightly and grow, and what's that quantifiable dollar figure? So I just don't want to wake up one day and find out this has gotten away from us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Understood. So, okay. Understood. Enough. I will stop beating that horse. Yeah. Gentlemen, anything you'd like to add? I, sh I should ask that until we all see each other more than two minutes monthly, could you please uh, introduce yourselves? Sure. sure. Uh, David Fontaine, Jr. of Fontaine Brothers. Uh, Frank Pear with Fontaine Brothers. Um, so a little bit of an update on what we've been doing as we're plugging into this process. Um, so as Paul and Katie mentioned, kind of immediately upon selection, we got together, I think, that next week, actually, um, and started <coughs> to talk about kind of big picture things, right, that our input will be most valuable on. Um, the items that, that we really zeroed in on first were making sure that our assumptions in terms of design schedule, procurement schedule, and how that translates into construction um, and phasing were accurate, and we found that, that they were. Um, and that was, as Katie said, you know, we wanted to get on the same page with the idea of trying to complete as much of the site package as possible 
along with that 60% submission um, at the same time, being able to procure the abatement, the demolition, all that early work to get it going um, this summer, which allows us not only to get a lot of the kind of risk off the table with the abatement and demo, but also to get a lot of that bulk site work done in an efficient manner where those buildings are coming down, you're filling in foundations. There's a lot of that stuff that's kind of tied together. Um, so that well, was one area. One question. Yeah. Though you won't say, and I understand why, are you close with your subs? Are we, you mean like in getting, do you, do you verifying you, subcontractor? Well, yeah, do you have your team already assembled, but you just haven't signed anything because we haven't signed anything? I, I wouldn't <laughs> say that we have a team assembled. I think that we probably have in each key trade, there's three to four or five subs that we have relevant experience with that we know we're very interested in. Okay. Um, but all of those trades will go out to competitive bid, be vetted out, scope leveled. Um, and we'll go with the most competitive. Yeah. Um, but that being said, so in, in terms of making sure that we're that we're thinking down the right road with assumptions in terms of schedule, procurement, stuff like that, we are talking to subcontractors, making sure that they're aware of when the project is coming out, how the sections are going to be bid, who the consultants are, who the team is, so that we're generating kind of excitement around it because there are a lot of public um, projects that will be procured in the next 18 months. So we want to make sure we're on that. Top of the list. Um, another thing that we're starting to do, so on procurement and scheduling, we're on the same page with LPA and PMA in terms of the early package abatement demo going out, then the concrete and steel kind of structure package going out with the 90% documents allows a lot of the long lead time things like concrete, rebar, structural <coughs> steel to get going while those 100% are completed, um, detailing of which would be completed when your mechanicals are bid and that kind of all syncs up over that late winter. Um, <coughs> 2020 time frame. Um, another thing that we are in the process of is actually going back and looking at the SD documents that were issued that PMA and, uh, I'm sorry, PMC and AM Fogarty did their SD estimate on, and we're going back now independently and doing an SD estimate on those to kind of confirm our thoughts on where those fall. Right, so to, to your point about tracking costs from <coughs> SD to DD to 60 to 90, we need to get a baseline kind of in our system per se of where we, we are at SD. Um, and then that will allow us as we go forward from SD to DD to 60 to 90 to track any you know, variances in the project scope um, and therefore the budget up and down. And then we'll allocate those various you know, variances to things like design contingency escalation um, and use those contingencies that we have in the budget wisely. Um, so we're, we're currently going through the quantity surveying process for the SD documents. We're also working on a cup fill analysis for um, the SD and kind of the updated DD grades. One of the things that we met with LPA on um, right up front was trying to set the right finished floor elevation for the building. Um, because, you know, the idea of balancing a site in a, in a simple world, right, would mean that if we raise the building, we're going to keep more on site, um, and that's going to be beneficial. But, you know, there's structural requirements for the fill that goes underneath the building. And in this case, with the basement the way that it is, or the walkout, there's an area we have to fill in with possibly processed or imported material. Um, but we also have some opportunity to lose perhaps some material on site over where the, the Barns. Barns are right now. So that's kind of all we're taking into account that big picture. And then um, last thing that we've been focusing on in the last couple of weeks is the different scenarios with how we prosecute the work in regards to the Lake Street relocation, um, which I think are still, you know, fluid and we're trying to refine those options, but that's been a discussion that we've been involved in in terms of cost and schedule impacts. And from our end, I understand Council has the deeds and relevant okay. easements, et cetera, et cetera, back to DCAM. And I think that's the last thing that we've been playing tennis so with. with. Yes. Yeah. So we should be, we're within threatening of, uh, of actually achieving the transfer. Yeah. We'll see that. We've still got a week or two with Mass Historic, but uh, I think we're in good shape. Anything else? No. Plug it away. You know, Paul, you're the master of those big chats that I can't figure out how to do. So you just said something. Maybe you're going to produce it. I don't know. But we have the original estimate that we took to town meeting. Mm -hmm. yes. and that's why I mm -hmm. worry about this. We went yeah, out. We represented that. something. So I think, Paul, to the extent it makes sense, you'll figure out how to do this rationally. Right. <clears throat> we took something to town meeting with a whole bunch of schedule of values and all that good stuff. So to some extent, what I'd like is, you know, the town meeting and all those numbers... 
And then as we go through the reality here, mm -hmm. some are going to grow, most will decrease, of course. <laughs> sure they are. <laughs> He's already laughing. So uh, <clears throat> it's that type of walkthrough I'd like to be able to do. In the event, some, excuse me, in the event someday we have to go back and explain something. Mm -hmm. I'd rather do it day one and never have to explain it than have to, you know, have an issue and six months from now, 18 months from now, be trying to reconstruct re, uh, everything. Perfect. So just give that some thought. I'm sure you'll come up with so something. This, this, by 17 spreadsheet, this is the, what the MSBA calls the Form 3011. Uh, the old this thing. is our project budget. And so any subsequent total, and it has, it has within it a very large component of it is the construction cost estimate. But then we have what we call the soft cost, which is designed in OPM fees, um, and owner equipment and furnishings, and this is the budget, and any subsequent estimate will always, have, when we summarize it and present it, we always have it side by side with our original budget that was presented and approved, and there will be variances, but the intent here is that uh, a, the, there will be pluses and minuses on the variances, but we, the, the, the intent here and um, the expectation is the, uh, that we will always be at or below that, that budget that we're carrying. And 12 months from now, when somebody has a legitimate question, I just want to be able to have a sheet to go back to. Mm -hmm. because yes. Perfect. Okay, anything else? All set with the architect or the contractor, sorry. Our next meeting date is February 12th, do I correct, Val? Okay, if there's not anything else to come before the building committee, <coughs> we'll adjourn. Motion? So moved. Second. Made seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? Aye. We will adjourn. Thank you all very much. <laughs>